Um, th thank you all for coming through. Uh, apologies for the late start. Um, as uh, the one who was supposed to chair has faced some technical challenge. Uh, but to carry on mm -hmm. with the program as we were supposed to. Um, and today, um, as we have been holding uh, these um, services, way, which we have um, titled um, Hope in a Storm, um, we have been sharing over the weeks where we desire and where we seek to comfort one another uh, during the difficult time that we are going through um, as a nation, a difficult time that we are going through uh, as a ministry, a difficult time that we are going through as families, and a difficult time that we are going through uh, as members. Uh, and, this, uh, and this is particularly uh, focusing uh, on the uh, COVID-19 pandemic issue, which has led to uh, several losses amongst ourselves, uh, brothers and sisters, our pa parents, fathers and, and mothers, our brethren um, in, in, in the ministry, close um, friends um, and even workmates. Um, and it has caused a lot of, 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 of grief um, amongst um, ourselves. So these services are meant to uh, reach one to another, uh, comfort one, ana one to another, share with one another. You would agree with me what we used to do was to meet physically and then we'll be able to comfort one another. But unfortunately, uh, because of the current pandemic, there are restrictions which make it impossible for us to gather around together um, and be in a position to do what we used to do um, to comfort one another uh, physically. Hence, we will do this um, through these virtual uh, platforms and virtual service. <coughs> My apologies. Um, so today, uh, we um, uh, graced uh, with one of our own, uh, who is um, Trevor, uh, who also went through um, quite a difficult time um, in the losses that he experienced. And he will uh, share with us, even as we uh, seek to comfort one, an one another. Um, but before he comes through, uh, before he, he shares, I will, um, uh, I will pray. Um, <clears throat> let's, just, let's just take some time to pray. Father, we want to thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. We come before you during such times as these, which are not easy times for us, uh, difficult times, Lord God. But you are not taken by surprise, Lord God, because these are times that you knew beforehand, and these are times also that you know even when they, when they happen um, to us, but they are not easy uh, to us. We pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, even as we invite your Holy Spirit, which you promised uh, to us, Lord God, that you, you, you said to us, I will not leave you alone. I will not leave you orphans, but I will leave you another comforter. Uh, who is the Holy Spirit, who will be able to comfort us. He is the one whom we are praying for, even at this time, Lord God, that sent your Holy Spirit, sent your comforter, my Lord and my God, to us in the name of Jesus Christ, that he may comfort us, that he may touch us, that he may minister to us, Lord God, in ways, Lord God, that we will feel that indeed you have touched us, you have ministered to us, you have comforted us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Use also this time, Father, to, to minister to the various ones who have gone through difficult times, some of which uh, cannot be described by words. The pains that we have gone through, some of which cannot be described by, by words. Even the comfort that we want to give one another, some of it may not be expressible by words, but help us, Lord God, even as we desire to comfort one another, even during this time, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God. 
be with us and guide us and lead us through. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you very Amen. much. I will um, give this time um, to our brother, um, Trevor Nguye, to share, uh, to share with us. Um, and then after him, uh, we'll also then get into another time of prayer and then the, the word will come through, uh, through Dr. Chimete. Uh, so, um, our brother Trevor, are you there? Are you available? Are you ready? You can yes, I am through. available. I'm available. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. We can come through. Please uh, share with us. Thank you. Good, good evening, everybody. Um, and thank you so much for this opportunity, which I, I view as a privilege uh, and a blessing. And my prayer is that uh, God is uh, indeed glorified, uh, that this is all about God um, and not about any one of us here. I have titled my message uh, or uh, my testimony, um, Sorrowful Yet Always Rejoicing, which I stole from uh, John Piper, and I find that it's in uh, Corinthians. Um, in Corinthians, um, uh, First Corinthians, as you'll know, uh, it's called, uh, the theme is uh, Glory Through Suffering. Um, it, 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 I started July, you know, with... Uh, both parents and by the end of july i was an orphan and uh without uh i had had lost uh, a niece and um in a way of in trying to cheer myself up uh, i i find myself using this uh, as a crutch uh with my wife or a way of uh, blackmailing her you know, when she's being difficult with me uh, or I want something from me, I said, plus you must remember that I don't have any parents anymore. You know, I don't have a father. I don't have a mother. But uh, today she threatened me by saying, if you continue doing this, I'm going to put you up for, for adoption. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll stop using that as a crutch. <laughs> um, on, on a, on, let me give you the context of um, what we've gone through. And in sharing this, um, for me, the thing that has carried me all along is that this life of mine is not my own. It's, it's God's life. Uh, I'm in this world for God's purpose. I'm in this world to fulfill, to fulfill God's will. And thus, sometimes I will not understand the things that he allows me to walk through or that indeed he asks me to walk through. So the paramount message, really, the theme that will run across for me is that this is not my life. This is God's life. And um, if I refuse to bend to his will, it's going to be painful. But if I surrender to his will, um, things might be easy. So let me give you a bit of context. Um, we lost a brother who had suffered from uh, uh, kidney failure for 17 years um, and was, was under treatment uh, around about June, towards the end of June. And um, hardly six weeks afterwards, um, we had perhaps one of the worst weeks that we've experienced as a family. I think it's definitely the worst weeks where we lost uh, my father, my mother, and my niece Lorraine all in one week. We lost them in one week and buried them in one week. Um, it felt like uh, one was watching a movie. It felt unreal. Uh, and every time, you know, I got the news, we got the news that, uh, first of all, dad has passed away. Um, it was like a huge blow. They fell, uh, uh, they succumbed, rather, they fell sick uh, almost at the same time. Uh, that is my mother and my my father. And where so whilst we still trying to process, you know, that they've fallen sick, um, hardly three, four, five days, um, my father was uh, was turning 80, 80, who turned 87, um, you know, passed away. Um, and uh, this was a, a tough one. Um, he was a friend, a uh, very hardworking man, uh, a domestic worker who had done so much. Uh, to give us the life that uh, we have, the life that I have at the present, mom pre present moment. 
a, a man with a tremendous sense of humor, um, uh, a man who suffered from malapropism that made him such an amazing human being because he could use words uh, in manner uh, in places that you didn't think they actually fitted. And um, right now, I think as we reminisce, we, we go back to that malapropism and we have a good laugh. Um, I think that's one thing that uh, this grieving has taught me. My mother was 79. Um, uh, rather, let me, my sis, my niece, rather, was, uh, was 32, um, followed uh, soon after we'd just gone to bury my father. The, 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 and the way it happened is the day we arrived from, from Bulawayo from burying my, my father, we passed through to see my niece who had uh, uh, tested uh, uh, positive to, to COVID and was being treated. And we saw him and she was well. But hardly 30 minutes after arriving uh, at our home in Harare, we got m- uh, news that uh, she was um, having problems to breathe. We just arrived from burying my, my father. We, whilst we were trying to find out what we could do, uh, the next thing we got a call um, that uh, Lorraine had passed on um, and we had to rush to go and see what, uh, what, what could be done. Um, Lorraine was a living miracle. Uh, my niece was 32 years old. She was born HIV positive. She survived HIV for 32 years, was taken away by COVID. Um, we had educated her at uh, Vitz University, and she had such a promising, a promising life. An amazing uh, young lady, talented, very sweet, uh, stubborn, with an amazing sense of humor. Um, it was painful walking in the room and finding Lorraine lying dead, cold on her bed, um, completely gone. And then you realize that uh, when God takes His spirit. Um, when God takes his spirit from us, it's so obvious that uh, something is gone and that something is what makes us uh, human and that is his spirit. And looking at Lorraine on the bed, in the bed it was clear that she was there uh, physically, but Lorraine that we knew was no more. Um, the spirit, w- which is Lorraine, was gone. Then we went uh, to lay Lorraine to rest. Uh, The same day we came back from laying Lorraine to rest, um, as I was sitting down to settle down from the funeral of laying laying Lorraine to rest, the news came in that my father, my mother rather, who had been receiving hopeful news that uh, she was recovering, that she had passed on. I mean, that was a huge blow. Um, You know, you, you really, you feel something has hit you. Uh, my mother was had had uh, uh, helped my mother, my father so much. Uh, she was also a domestic worker. She was seventy nine, hardworking. I uh, did all that she could to help daddy put us through school. Um, so these are precious people. These are precious people to me. People that I miss so dearly um, right now. So that's the pain that I'm I'm going through right now. I miss I miss Lorraine. I miss my mother. I miss my father. I miss my brother Dave. So it's four people who have passed on uh, inside uh, one month or one month on almost. And uh, uh, the truth is, as I'm talking to you right now, it's as if I'm watching a split screen. And um, I do have a sense of uh, guilt from time to time. Which screen am I watching? Who am I paying more attention to? Is it Lorraine? Is it my mother? Is it my father? Is it Dave? And why am I doing that? I have those conversations with myself. But in all that good people, uh, I think for me, I stop and thank God for the miracle of life. Thank God for the miracle of healing. Twelve members of the family tested positive. Three passed on, um, my mother, my father, and my niece. Nine have survived. That's a miracle. And I want to give glory to God. I want to thank God for the miracle of healing and the miracle of uh, of life itself. Um, so we're celebrating uh, the nine are alive and well. They've tested negative. Those who had not uh, vaccinated um, are vaccinating. So in the midst of grief, in the midst of the sorrow, we're joyful that, uh, you know, God has 
saved um, nine members of our family. They're surviving. They are strong. They've learned the lessons of uh, how tough this thing called COVID is and how tough the season uh, that we're all going through is. One thing that I'm quite aware of, uh, good people, is that there is no way we can stop both God's perfect will and God's permissive will. There's nothing in this world that happens without God's perfect will uh, or God's permissive will. And what's happened to us as a family, um, 12 people tested uh, positive to COVID, nine people survived, three are late. You know, there's no panic in heaven. Uh, God knew that the season would come to pass. And the the lesson for us as a family is to accept God's either perfect will, that is if we believe that uh, this is what God may, has decided to happen, or God's permissive will, which is, um, you know, saying to ourselves, God has allowed this to happen. Um, I, th- I think uh, as Christians, you know, we sometimes love to think that God caused this and that maybe God has just allowed this to happen. But I, I, might, I will deal with that um, in, in my next point, which is consider the, the issue of Job in the Bible, where, um, you know, the, the struggle between God and Satan, between good and evil, uh, results in Job, God allowing Job to be tested and to be visited by terrible calamity, loss of his family, his wealth, and everything else. But Job remains faithful to God and praising God um, all the time. So within our, within our context, I, I, I ask myself, is this God's perfect will or God's permissive will? Um, I, I don't know whether I know whether it's permissive will or, or, or perfect will, but it's God's will uh, somewhat that this has happened. Because if God didn't want this to happen, it will, it would not have happened. Um, and maybe we would have been able to pray. And, um, um, you know, he, he, the Spirit would have told us that you need to pray to stop this from happening. But uh, none of that was uh, was revealed to us. So I am resigned to the fact that um, it's either his permissive will or it's his perfect will. Uh, in, in either circumstance, uh, it, it means that, uh, you know, all I have to do is to accept it um, and and fully embrace it and, uh, and, sur- and surrender to it. I've accepted that, you know, what God has allowed to happen, I cannot refuse. I have to accept fully what God has allowed to happen. That is where I get my peace. That is where I get my joy. So as I'm talking to you right now, Painful as it might be, in sorrow as I might be, I am fully surrendered to this moment. And being fully surrendered to this moment is, I realize that it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what I wish could happen. I cannot change this moment. This moment is what it is. Um, Mom, dad, and my niece are not here, and my brother are not here. And the other reality is that uh, nine members of the family have survived. So there's sorrow, there is joy in this season that I am in right now. Where am I to choose which one I am going to accept? I will accept all of it, the joy and the sorrow. And remember that uh, God is enthroned in heaven. He's in charge. He would not have uh, allowed anything to happen which he didn't think uh, I was I was going to, I would, I would not be able to, to handle. I'm reminded of uh, Philippians uh, 4, 11 to, to 13, and to be content at all times, for I have learned in whatever situation that I am in to be content at all times. It is not easy, but the alternative is much more painful. Refusing or denying the moment um, is much more painful and is the stuff that leads us to be depressed because we wish for what is not the moment. We wish for what is not is not real, you know. I'm also reminded of um, as 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 I go through this morning process, as I go through the sorrow and the joy, and the joy emanates from visiting those moments of beauty, those moments uh, where we shared laughter with my parents, with my niece, where we 
um, had good times where we went on holiday and so forth. I find joy in that, in celebrating the good times that we had. And in knowing that whilst they were alive, we did the best that we could to make them comfortable, to make them happy. And that gives me so much, so much joy. Um, then I'm taken to David. You recall David in, in, in 2 Samuel 12, 18 to 23, when David fasts and uh, is said uh, he's not eating, he's wearing torn clothes uh, because his uh, son with uh, Bathsheba uh, is not well. Um, but the moment the David's servants come and tell him that uh, your son is dead, David gets up, he puts on new clothes, and he says, can I have a meal? And they say, but why are you doing this? He says, but whilst he was sick, I fasted, and uh, I was sad. I was hoping that God would heal him, but God hasn't. So why should I continue mourning, not knowing that uh, um, he's, not going to, he's not going to be healed? I know I'm going to be joined with him, but he's not going to come and join me. I find myself in that, in that space where I say to myself, um, they are in a better place than where I am at the present moment. So whilst I'm sorrowful and indeed miss them, I'm comforted by the fact that they are in a, in a place that's better than where I am right now. I'm also comforted by the fact that the thought that, and I'll repeat this, that whilst we're here on earth, I did my best to love them. I did my best to spend time with them, that I have a treasure of memories that I visit um, from time to time. And nobody's going to take that treasure of memories, memories away from me. I find as a family, uh, we, 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 we finding occasion so many times these days to laugh about the good times that we had, to laugh about death's mal malpropism. Uh, about ma the way mom used to behave, you know, the joy that uh, Lorraine, my niece, was uh, in any party and that kind of stuff, the dancing and everything else. I want to spend my time in those moments, even though I'm sorrowful. Those moments give me opportunity to, opportunities to be absolutely joyful. Um, and then um, I'll share with you, you know, 2 uh, Corinthians 6.10, which, which is the verse where uh, John Piper got the, this, this message, is sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. And rejoicing because I deliberately uh, accentuate the positive memories that I had with my parents. Um, because I do not spend time trying to change what has already happened. It's not easy. But I've discovered that um, trying to do the opposite is actually much more painful and much more difficult. That it would it would make my journey of uh, healing even that more um, difficult. I, I hold on to a definition of joy, um, which I picked up from Rick Warren long back, and and I meditate on it from time to time. And Rick Warren says joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. The quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right. And the determined choice to praise God in every situation. God is in charge. It is God who is determined that I walk this journey. It is God that I praise, God that I praise in this praise moment. This moment. It is God that I praise in this moment, and I continually uh, praise him. Yes, I do mom have moments when I weep, I've cried. I do have moments when um, um, I'm in pain, and when I'm in pain, I choose to glorify him, play music, praise him. I can't be mad with him <laughs> um, because that's not going to achieve anything, anything for me. So I choose to rejoice, like uh, Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, uh, commands us to do, rejoice always, praise without ceasing, give th thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for us who are in Christ. 
it is not easy to rejoice. Do not, not get the impression that I'm, I'm saying it is easy to rejoice. It is a choice that I've determined to make for my sanity. Um, one thing that has happened, good people, is that I find myself suddenly as the head of a family because mom and dad are normal. Um, I have nobody else to call to, call to when uh, my uh, brothers and sisters uh, misbehave. I have to call on to God um, and say, you know, this is what's happening. I'm suddenly uh, not just the firstborn of the family, but the head of the family. Who would have thought of that um, at the beginning of July? And, and that requires uh, a certain sense of resolve. Um, and which one which I, I cannot do on my own, I can only do uh, with the Almighty God. Let me share with you the challenges that I've experienced of being in grief, sorrow, and joyful during COVID. The, as I've outlined, the, um, all this happened so quickly. Um, before you, one week is over, eight, uh, three people are gone and you are dealing with the real possibility that more are going to go because they have been uh, confirmed positive. You are calling doctors left and right and center to, to see, you know, to ensure that is it possible that they can be um, cured? Can, can they receive uh, medi- medi- medication? So this is the three weeks that, three, four weeks that we have endured. And only last week, I think on, uh, if I'm not wrong, last week on Friday, the last member of the family was confirmed negative. And boy, did we celebrate. But the passing on of my dad, my mother, and my niece were so sudden and in such quick succession that at some point, I must be honest with you, I don't know whether I fully comprehended what happened, whether I fully processed what happened. But I do have some, some, some handles as to how you know, I ought to handle this, knowing that it is God's will, his perfect will or his permissive will that has made this happen, that he is in charge, that it is life that I'm leading, that I cannot pick and choose the journey that I want to walk because I'm in this world for his purpose. I'm in this world uh, to serve uh, his, his will. Then the other thing is, the, the sad bit is not being able to visit my parents. My parents have fallen ill a number of times, and we have either flown to Bulawayo or driven to Bulawayo, uh, sat with them in hospital, held their hands, talked to them, laughed, went away, worried, um, and went back again to see them. With COVID, you don't have those precious moments. I'm sure there's sometimes when you, you know, going to hospital becomes a burden, but COVID, you know, um, removes that burden if you think it's a burden. Uh, and I sit with you, uh, for, for me, it's like, wow, if only we'd been given an opportunity to visit mom, to visit dad, to sit down and, 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 and talk with them. COVID robs us of that opportunity. There's no body viewing, and body viewing is a cultural norm that allows us to begin to process uh, closure. With COVID, um, with my father, three members of the family, or rather two members of the family were allowed to go and and view uh, his body, which has basically identified that it was him. I didn't go. So I have a a bit of... um, um, unfinished business as far as my father is concerned, because I didn't see him in, in the casket um, as it were. I was, I was able uh, to go and, and, and identify my mother with my wife. Um, so I have, I have processed that slightly better than I have processed um, um, the passing of uh, my father. I was there to view um, my niece and to be there as she was put in, as she was carried away. But even the way that she was carried away, uh, the one thing that is painful about COVID is that our relatives are not treated like human beings. COVID and the manner in which our relatives are treated dehumanizes them. It, it, they, are, they, are stigma, they are stigmatized. They are treated like animals. My mother, and particularly my mother, because she's the one that uh, my mother and niece are the ones that I have... Uh, first-hand experience, I got the sense that my mother was being treated like an animal, like a thing. 
Um, um, and, and that remains painful with me. I do not want to dwell on it very much because if I do, then it makes me um, upset. Um, but to what, to, what, to what end? So the way COVID uh, deaths are treated robs our relatives of humanity and dignity. Um, like I said, they're treated like animals. And also because there's no gathering. Um, so my father was laid to rest by 30 people. This is a man who there would have been, you know, hundreds of people from all walks of, of life. Our relative from Zambia would have come in and that kind of stuff. But I do recognize that if that was to allow to happen during COVID, that would mean the spread uh, of the disease. But what, what I'm just sharing to you right now is the reality of not having members, uh, the members of the extended family being there with you uh, to share your, yeah, your grief uh, and, and to support you. My mother was laid to rest by 16 people. Um, my brother, wife, and uh, daughter could not attend my mother's uh, uh, funeral because they had been tested uh, uh, positive. And um, um, yeah, so again, this is a woman who was very, uh, we, we, we was respected within the brethren in Christ Church. Um, a woman who was respected within the political circles uh, in, in Bulawayo. Uh, her neighbors from Agwegwe and, and that kind of stuff would have wanted to come in and be their farewell. But everybody stayed away, would have, had to stay away. I had to put my foot down, having seen what had happened, to say, sorry, it's going to be only 16 people and, and not, no, no more, so that we, are, we, we try and contain uh, the spread of, uh, of this virus. So those are the conditions in which our loved ones, um, you know, are, are, are put to rest. And this robs us that process of walking uh, towards, uh, towards closure. Um, be that as it may, you know, we, we've got to make an effort to, to find the closure, to find the healing. Uh, and, and for me, uh, as I reflect good people, I don't think I would have been able to deal with what has happened to us as a family if I didn't have a personal relationship with God, if I didn't have an intimate relationship with my God, a personal relationship, like I say. Um, and I, I get the sense that, you know, whatever has happened to me spiritually um, um, has prepared me for this season. Um, my faith, uh, when, when this happened, it found my faith having grown quite considerably. I have a ritual of reading the Bible every morning, uh, praying, meditating. I have a ritual of reading the Bible from Genesis to Revelations at least once uh, a year. And that has brought me closer to my, to my God. It has strengthened and built my faith, which I think has enabled me to deal uh, in a better way with, uh, what, in a healthy way rather, with what it, what has, has just happened to us, you know. I've also um, say to people that we all need therapists. I have a therapist who is a Christian. That when tough times like this happen, um, I, I sit down and have a conversation with my therapist. Um, shrink as people are call, uh, as people call them. But it's one thing that I would recommend, that if you don't have a therapist, if you don't have a, a group of people that you talk to, uh, and, and, and the therapist is much more recommended for, as far as I'm concerned, because this is somebody that you can be vulnerable with, somebody who's, who, who, who doesn't have a, an, an X to grind, as it were. That I found very helpful. The episode that I recorded with Bishop Mkandla last week, I find it very therapeutic, um, um, the questions that he asked me, the ways that he pushed me, the things that he made me realize I ought to be to be dealing with. I've decided as a, as a, as, as a result of what's happened over the past two or so weeks um, and reflected that I need to take time off. That is my way of saying I really need to listen to what my spirit is saying, to what my body is saying, to what my soul is saying. I need to give my time to grieve, to be sorrowful, to be joyful, to immerse myself in what I'm going through right now, rather than trying to find diversions through work or through other things. So right now, as I'm talking to you, I am fully immersed in the process of grief, 
in the process of finding closure, the process of finding um, um, healing, as it were. And one of those things is, is really being, being, being kinder to myself, being, um, giving me, myself time to sleep as much as possible. Um, basic self-care, exercise, eat well, uh, nature myself and to some extent spoil myself, be gentle with myself, forgive myself, because I spend my, more time with myself than with anybody else. So I need to be um, gentler with myself. I need to be conscious of uh, all the things that I'm going through, the thought process, the, pro- the thoughts that I ought to be entertaining and the thoughts that I ought not to be entertaining. Um, you know, one of, a couple of weeks before mom fell sick, I called her and uh, I called her by her name. I said, Yebo Alima. Oh, she was so delighted. She laughed, you know, and I remember that laughter. I got to those places, those beautiful places, those beautiful memories. She laughed and says, oh, I know every time when you call me and you call me by my name that you miss me. I said, oh, yes, I was missing you, mama. Because we had tried to avoid visiting them because of COVID, thinking that would protect them. But clearly we were not able to protect them. God's... uh, Either permissive will or God's perfect will has happened and has taken them away. I also remember I visited a a, a moment when I called uh, around about uh, 9, 10 o'clock and both my mother and father, when they were still well, they didn't pick up the phone. I called around 11 o'clock. My mother eventually picked up the phone and I said, oh, you guys are really sitting pretty. What were you doing? She says, oh, we woke up late and we were bathing. I said, bathing at 10? You're sitting pretty. She says, you know, right now when I think of that, it warms my heart. She says, Mdanami, we are so happy. What you guys have done for us, you have no idea how happy, how happy we are. When I go to that place, it says to me, Trevor, you and your brothers and sisters, your wives and so forth, you did the best that you could do for these guys to be comfortable. That, I mean, as if she knew that we would not have an opportunity to sit down and her tell me that, um, you know, it was so beautiful. It was so blessing. I know that she was happy. He, she and her husband were absolutely happy. We bought them a big house uh, in Sebabs. They were comfortable, too big for them. Sometimes they would complain. And they had, they led for nothing. And, and those moments I visit to find the joy that flows from uh, these beautiful people that uh, God blessed us with. There are ifs, good people, that cross my mind. What if? What if? But I've taught myself, I've said to myself this season, I must refuse to entertain the ifs that cross my mind. Yes, let them cross my mind, but let them, let them not find a home in my mind. The ifs are so many. The ifs are what makes us guilty um, about our relatives who've passed on. I could have so many ifs, but what's the point of visiting the ifs when we know that uh, I don't have the answers to the ifs? I do not have the answers. So one if is, what if we had sent them to a better hospital? Maybe they could have survived. Do I have an answer to that question? No, I don't. So why, why do I even visit that if? So I give that as, a, as an example. And there are a lot of ifs that cross my mind. But because I have taught myself when the if comes, dismiss it and focus on what you can, on what you, you can deal, with, you deal with. I can't answer the ifs because I don't have the answers. There's no point in me entertaining uh, the ifs. Um, ifs are unproductive, they are a waste of time because you'll never get the answers to the ifs. But one thing that you'll get is that you're going to be frustrated. I find myself frustrated when I, I do entertain the ifs, so I don't. It reminds me of Proverbs twenty twenty four, which says, the Lord directs, directs our steps. So why try and understand everything along the way? 
The Lord directs our steps. So why try and understand everything along the way? And when those ifs cross my mind, I quickly say, God is in charge. His will will take place. It's not my will, but God's will. It's not my life, but God's life that I'm living. One thing that I've also um, have decided not to focus on is self-pity and victim mode. These are dangerous places to visit. Um, self-pity um, makes you um, it makes you comfortably briefly, but the more you dwell into it, it's a dark hole that becomes difficult um, to get out of. So I have no time for self-pity, no time for pity parties. Um, I try and avoid the guilty trips. Like I said, I forgive myself for what I didn't do or for what I did. I forgive myself and don't go onto those uh, guilty trips and no time for pity parties uh, and no time for what if. Um, my grief and sorrow should not uh, inconvenience others. You know, sometimes it's uh, I've gotten to a place and uh, I say to myself, why are they treating me like this? Do they Are they aware that I don't have a father and, and a mother? We have a relative, my, my, my wife and I, laugh about this, who, when driving on the road, uh, when people overtake them, say, but do they know that uh, I lost a husband? Is that why they're treating me like this? I could use it as a crutch, but uh, it, it, it achieves uh, very little. So my sorrow should not be imposed on others. Um, I should endure it in a manner that doesn't uh, uh, um, affect other people's, uh, other people's joy as it were. In, in concluding, uh, good people, I, I realized that, um, you know, this has just been a month um, for, my, for my dad and uh, less than a month for my mom, for my niece, um, and that the, the road is going to be long, but I'm quite certain of what um, it is that I, I must do to ensure that uh, uh, I go through this in a healthy manner. I am I am clear about what those roadmarks are. The don't visit the what if no pity parties. Uh, accept what God has allowed to happen. Fully embrace it. Uh, fully resign. Uh, uh, surrender to to what God has allowed to happen. And that's that's difficult. But so far, I get the sense that. It is the healthier choice uh, rather than trying to change what has happened or wish that things were not what they are. Am I in pain? Yes, I'm in pain. Do I wish that the, the, this didn't happen? Yes, indeed, but it's already happened. That's the reality that I, I am having to deal with. I am at peace knowing that this is either God's permissive will or God's perfect will, that God is in charge, that this is not my life. That it's his will, not my will. Thank you so much. Thank you I'm so done. much. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Trevor, for such a powerful uh, testimony and also for being so vulnerable uh, with your life and the experiences that you have gone through. Um, thank you uh, so much for, for, for that sharing. We re really, um, if it is coming from someone who has walked the journey, it, it has more weight and more impact because it, you, it's talking from what one has gone through, which is reality. And this is reality which he was sharing uh, with us. I like the, 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 the balance that you brought through. Yes, grieving, you were grieving. You also then reflected on the positive that you could pick on. To say, yes, there are those that have passed away, but there are also those that have recovered. That balance, I think that's a healthy balance which we which we all need uh, so that we don't just 
dwell on one aspect, which is the negative. Um, and I think also on the aspect of those that got healed, I then went on to add to us maybe that may not have been even affected until now. It's a positive where you are, you also say, still God loves me and is mm. caring and protecting me. It's a, mm. So it's that, that balance, I found it so powerful. In the midst of our grief, we can also focus on the good that God is still doing to us and those around us. That's a powerful uh, balance, which I really um, take on. And also the reflection that you came to a point of accepting, number one, it can be the perfect will of God, or it may be the permiss- permissive will of God. God has mm-hmm. allowed it. Mm-hmm. And it is, it, it is a point, painful as it may, it is a point of acceptance which we need to get to uh, so that we are helped uh, in, in managing um, uh, our grip, our grief. And the example that Job gives us, um, it's not we, what we are going through is not unique to us. It also happened then, um, and the, that we derive uh, comfort, comfort from it. Um, so there is sorrow, but there is also that joy, uh, that balance. I would implore each and everyone. We have gone through a lot. We are still going through a lot. I believe that balance will help us. Um, I also like the challenges that you shared, which is reality, because that's reflecting on reality that Mm -hmm. I faced these challenges. And we Mm -hmm. cannot dismiss those realities. And we'll continue to come across those realities. Mm -hmm. But you you handled them so well. Um, And I think it will also help those that will go through the same or that have gone through the same um, uh, situations. Um, not being able to visit your loved one, it's mm-hmm. painful. Not being able to have closure, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pain. Um, not gathering around when, when you know this is the last moment, it's, 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 it's a pain. So those are realities, and thanks for bringing them up, uh, even as you handled them, and as you shared the experiences that um, you went through. I also liked the advice you gave the therapist. Uh, Very important again, because you also want to work with someone who will handle, who will help help you handle a grief. Um, Yes, you may have a professional therapist. You can also even have uh, counselors that we have in our midst, Mm -hmm. uh, which you can share with uh, the the, the pains that you are going through. I think there's a common saying that says a problem shared is a problem half. I've solved. It, mm. it, it's important to try and share some of the problems that we we go through. Um, we really did allow you, brother Trevor, to go through and to take the time that you did, and we will not have the time for the word because we know you. you we needed that. Uh, we are not apologetic about about that at all. We really needed to hear from from the horse's mouth. Uh, the word will come later in other sessions, but for today, we, we, we take this as, 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 as good, uh, word, good comfort, good sharing that is coming from someone who has walked the journey, um, and, um, who has shared with us, um, these experiences. So I will read, um, um, some scriptures and then I will, I will, I will pray. Um, uh, at, at, at the end. Um, true, Dr. Chimbetete was supposed to share the word, um, but we have agreed that you, you have really, what we have shared is so, so powerful that we do not need to add um, a lot. I'll read um, Second Corinthians um, chapter 1, um, verse um, 3 to 4. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. And this is exactly what you have done, uh, Brother Trevor that you have used what God comforted you with to comfort others. 
uh, it, this is very, very important. This is the encouragement that is coming through um, this word, this portion of scripture, uh, which I have just read. I'll also read John 14, uh, verse 27. The word of God says, Be peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Let's continue to derive the peace that God promises us, um, that he lives with us, that he gives us, even during these times of trouble and uh, uh, grief. Uh, let's continue to run to God. I also read Psalms 73, um, verse 26. The word of God says, they, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Let's continuously look up to God for strength. Where we are weak, let's go back to God. Where we are down, let's, let's go back to God. Where we are low, let's go back to God. And he will give us uh, the strength that we need. Uh, then uh, Philippians 4, verse um, 6 uh, and seven, the word of God says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So let's continuously present our requests to God so that we may receive the peace that he has, the peace that surpasses all understanding and where, when the word of God says all understanding, it means where it's not even, what, where we can't even imagine that we can get peace, God can give us that peace. Uh, so let's continuously uh, go to God. Hallelujah. Um, I will pray. <clears throat> and as I pray, uh, I think for those that might have received news, we have received news that uh, Sekuru Mushuli um, has, has passed away. Um, and this is um, father to Mrs. Mapani. Uh, and that's another loss uh, within our midst. So we also want to continue to commit them uh, before God. And we also want to continue to commit those that have suffered loss uh, before uh, to God so that he may continue to comfort us. Father, we want to thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord God, for Brother Trevor, for the sharing that he has done with us today. Thank you for using him mightily. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Lord God, for allowing him to be vulnerable, to open himself up for us, where we can use him even as an example to derive comfort, um, Lord God, because you comforted him. Uh, because you walked with him when he went through it. Thank you, Lord God, for, for using him. But Lord God, we are not only grateful for using him to share with us, we also want to pray for him and for his family and for all his relatives that have gone through this loss, which is not easy. But Lord, continuously be with them, continuously comfort them. Continuously give them handles. Yes, yes, shared his own experience. Others may be at various levels. Help them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, to handle this and deal with this and process this, Lord God, and continuously comfort them in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for all those others which we might not have mentioned by name today that lost their loved ones. They are at various stages of processing the, their griefs. They are at various stages, my Lord, oh my God, of processing their loss. Father, I pray, comfort them in the name of Jesus Christ. Brother Trevor shared about what ifs, which leads us nowhere because those questions will not have answers. Help, my Lord, oh my God, for them to have comfort, to derive comfort from you in the name of Jesus Christ, and do not to wander in areas where it will lead them, my Lord, oh my God, worse off rather than better off. So, Father, I pray for your touch. 
I pray for the ministration of your Holy Spirit. I pray for your comfort upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I want to pray for the Mapanis, my Lord and my God and the Mushuli family. Lord, oh God, we have recently lost their father. Father, I pray, comfort them, Lord God. Touch them, oh Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Minister to them, Lord God, in the best way that you know how. Lord God, even as they go through this difficult time. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, um, everyone, for joining. Um, uh, please, let's, I, 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 I hope we're all taking notes. I was actually jotting some. Um, let's try to use some of the handles that Brother Trevor gave us. They will help us in handling loss in dealing with grief. They will help us. I really liked the balance that he, he gave us dealing with, with the loss and at the same time being grateful of the positives that is, that is surrounding him. Let's have that balance as we continue to navigate uh, this season. May God richly bless you um, and may he continuously comfort you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. You. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.